All right, folks, got myself a used mini excavator, as you can see here. It's the John Deere 35D. It's got the big 1.6 liter. And I don't know Zippy Zap about it, and anytime I buy something used, uh, you know, automobile or piece of equipment or lawnmower or anything, I kind of like to get familiar with it, have a little bit of bonding time, if you will. Because A, I never believed the person I bought it from because, you know, they always give you the same story. This guy told me the little old lady just drove this to church on Sunday, but I don't believe him. So we just tried to go through it front to back, top to bottom, soup to nuts, as they say, and just get familiar with it. First of all, so if you're out using it and something breaks, well, we kind of know where things are at. And so we know where things are at. Uh, this machine has a little over 2,000 hours on it, 2,300 and some change, I think. And I don't know if any of the maintenance has ever been done. You know, according to the guy you bought it from, it has. Everything's been done multiple times, but you don't know unless you do it yourself. And the uh, last thing I want to do is take something that's decent and ruin it just because I neglected to, you know, check it out myself. So plan on making a playlist where I'm going to stick all the different items, probably in smaller segmented videos. So if you're looking for something in particular on your 35D, if anybody has one of these, they can find it easily broken down however we do it or if you just want to watch the whole thing continuous i think you can just play the playlist i don't know but anyhow check it out stick around and i hope you guys enjoy it disclaimer folks uh i am not a professional operator as a matter of fact i have just under one hour closer to zero so if we round down about zero hours experience operating an excavator so i know zippy zap about them and two uh, I'm not a heavy wheel mechanic or a equipment mechanic per se. I work on cars and light trucks and that's it. So we're gonna fake it till we make it. If you want professional advice on how to operate, own, and maintain one of these, <laughs> don't watch these videos. Well, here we go, folks. We're gonna start by servicing the engine. In this video, I think we'll include uh, replacing the, the fuel filter, oil filter, engine oil, uh, that kind of stuff, just some basic engine maintenance here we're going to do the air filter i got some parts from john deere i've got the service manual i bought the shop manual for this also when i picked it up so let's get started we're going to start right here under the machine mother of pearl we got us a 19 mil we're going to crack that drain plug loose and then we're going to get our bucket get that baby ready you don't want to forget the bucket be a lot of grunting and growing this tail. Not used to crawling around on the ground, to be honest with you. Are we gonna hit the bucket? I think so. Mostly, anyways. Sure, don't drop the drain plug. You will go fishing. There we go. So we'll let that sit there and glug. Oh, she's glugging for real. Let me take the oil cap off here. Let a little bit of air in that baby. That should help. That helped. Oh, that helped. So we'll spin this oil filter off. Now I see it looks like somebody was using their noodle. It has a little cup underneath it with a hose that goes down. That should, in all reality, drain directly into our bucket. Oh my God, I'm for Come on, baby. Thought maybe we could get this by giving it a handy. There we go. So, we should be able to crack this fella loose. It should drizzle out the bottom. Like I see, there's a little catch tray right there. Yep, it's coming right out that hose. Well, isn't that pretty smart? Some auto manufacturers should take note. <laughs> I'm gonna let this kind of drain right there in that little cup inside there. We should be able to weasel that up out of here. Somebody had a Fram filter on it. The guy assured me he always only used John Deere products. <laughs> this is why you can't trust anybody you buy from on Craigslist. I'm just gonna go in there. I'll put that right where you can't see what I'm doing. Cause that makes for helpful videos. I'm just cleaning off the surface where the uh, Oil filter sits. And then we're gonna let this drain for a little while. The engine is cold. 
So we're gonna let this drizzle. It's been sitting inside here overnight, so all the oil should be in the pan. Uh, so we'll let that go for a little while. Meanwhile, we will do some other maintenance items here. While we're right here, we're gonna address these uh, fuel filter. I think it's just a water separator. So let me, A, make sure we have the right parts. Hopefully we do. I think the filter I have looks much larger than this one. Let's go take a peek. Let's see. We're gonna take, we're gonna crack this baby loose. Looks like a you know, Baldwin filter on there. So I'm gonna crack this little guy loose. I don't believe that there is a filter element in this water separator. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it off just to have a little look-see because I do see some crud in the bottom of it. Now, I don't know if it's just algae, but there is a fair amount of crap sitting here around the bottom. I can't tell what it is. So I think I'm gonna feel a little more comfortable taking that little fella off just to you know, be sure. Typically, you would just stick a hose on the bottom of it because the water is gonna go to the bottom and we crack the little butterfly loose here and let it drizzle. Let me get a pan. This one's a little too big, fella. I don't think we're gonna make that big of a mess, so we'll just stick some oil absorbent pads here. Turn our peacock off. Now this does have a 12 volt electric fuel pump on it, so we don't really have to worry about you know getting it full of air per se. Take and just move this to the side. I'll go dump it out. So you don't make a giant mess. I'm gonna try to drain a little bit of fuel out of this before we take it off. So we'll open up the peacock here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of sediment coming right down the hole here. Well, let me stick that back in there for the time being. Yeah, that is a bunch of junk sitting in the bottom of this thing. So I tell you what, we'll take in the cracker loose here. Also going to pull the drain on the um, fuel tank in case there's a bunch of junk sitting in the bottom of the fuel tank. We kind of want to get that out. I'm wondering if we, you know, there we go. I was going to say it might might flow out a little better now that we've cracked the filter loose. I just want to catch a little bit in this little container here. Let it drain down because I don't know how much fluid is above the bowl. I don't want to make too big a mess. If I can avoid it. You'd think this guy would have a little hose he could stick on there, but I don't. So I'm gonna dump this in with the oil. Drain out some more. There's all kinds of crap in the bottom of that thing. There we go. I can see the fuel level in there now. Okay. All right. We should be safe. Let me go dump this in the oil. And this little fella off here. Well, not 
sure how that element comes out right away, so I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna go get a little tray, we're gonna dump this in it, see what things look like. This is just sitting, oh man, there's all kind of, what the heck is this stuff? It does look like algae. I mean, there's some grit and stuff, but it looks like algae to me. It's kind of weird. Huh, and then just, you know, a lot of sediment and crap. Get some brake clean, blast that thing out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's kind of chunky. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to pull the peacock out because some of the stuff got kind of jammed down in the Threads. It didn't get jammed, it just migrated down in there. That way we can make sure it's all cleaned out. That'll make you feel better. I'll finish getting this thing washed up. <laughs> there you go, throw it directly on the ground. I don't know if I bought a new O-ring or not. I'll have to look at my parts list of things I obtained and there was like a little spacer ring here I hope that sits up on that uh, piece that we or the strainer element or not we'll figure this out before we put it back together okay so a little screen that's got a bunch of junk in it too you guys see that and then that just sits up in Feels like there's probably an O-ring up in there. Yeah, it still feels like it goes on good. That O-ring I did not get, but it still feels real nice. But yeah, there's all kinds of crap, you know, down inside of it. I mean, you guys can see that on there. So we're gonna get this flushed out too. Very gingerly blow it off. It's a, uh, you know, just a screen element. This just keeps the big chunks out. It's like the primary, secondary filter. I guess it would be. Well, this thing here was a pain right in the butt to clean. Oh, tell me that sucker pops up. You ding dong. I just spent like a whole bunch of minutes trying to get all this out. 47 cans of brake parts cleaner. And I thought I had it. And what do you know? The thing pops right off. I could have done it in five seconds. Wow. Maybe this guy should take a break and read some service data. Yeah, look at that. Everything I was trying to accomplish for the last three and a half hours. Uh, just got it <laughs> so that does pop apart so that's good these screens are pretty fine so there's that there's there's something we learned so we have that this little guy pops right back together make sure there's no alignment tab or key or anything there that pops together and then this here is not a spacer i was checking this out cleaning off my housing thought maybe it fit on there and it dupes and it goes down in here and it just sits in the bottom however you know what that thing does it floats it floats in water I don't remember reading that in the uh, service manual but then again I didn't read it stem to stern I did some glancing through it but I don't remember anything reading about this but yes if you have that in there in your pre-filter assembly if you see your little red ring, if that baby's floating up, it floats on water, stays at the bottom of diesel fuel. So that's kind of neat, huh? A little bit of a visual indicator for you, if you will. And then it does appear. Oh, <laughs> it appears that I ordered one of these things, which I don't believe that we need. Uh, it is totally reusable and washable. So I'm gonna take that back to the deer because we don't need that. And I think if I remember correctly, when I was looking in the www.buyerjohndeerpartsier.com I saw the element but I didn't know right offhand if it was like a paper element or not so I just ordered it oh it's thundering outside that's scary hope we don't lose power 
So we're going to stick this back in here. We're going to put this assembly back together. I am going to put a little bit of O-ring lube on there. I'm going to be using super lube. Just to be on the safe side, our O-ring doesn't bind up on us. So we'll smear that baby down a little bit. Ensure a good seal and ensure that it's not going to bind up and, and roll on us. Probably just use some diesel fuel too. All right, let's go. I will say this about the old John Deere, and I'm not, you know, brand loyal to anybody, but they do have a great online parts lookup, if you will. You go in, you put in the serial number of your machine. I just want to make darn tooting that's up on there all the way. We'll loop up that hole a little bit too. Uh, you put in your serial number and then you get the full exploded view and breakdown of your parts and part numbers. Make sure your little red floater deal in there is not you know, stuck underneath your fuel filter. I'll wind this little guy up. This wrench I found behind the seat in the excavator in a bag. Doesn't look like it's ever been opened. It looks like I was the first person to open it. So I don't know if they all come with it or if it's something somebody bought. But go ahead and torque that down to factory specs. Shine it up real nice. Let's grab our fuel filter. I'm really hoping that the parts are right because that thing's like three times the size of the one we took off. <laughs> Not quite three times the size, but it's substantially larger. The o-ring and everything's about the same size but it's a little fatter it's a little longer <laughs> you don't want to do that you don't want to poke that down and lose it down in no man's land we'll take that off get a little drop of our diesel fuel bring around the rosy with it we're going to look up there we're going to make sure our ceiling surface is nice and clean and it is fish that through here. I'll give you guys the part numbers of what I'm using, but you should look them up yourself or have your dealer look them up. Well, that's a big old jabroni. Come on, you can do it. So I just get them as tight as I can by hand. And that's usually tight enough. There's that. We'll turn that back on. Now we should be able to go and just turn the key on and let her self prime. Make sure you don't bump the key and crank the engine over. Getting your diesel full of air is a real pain in the butt. Make sure we tightened up our bleeder. We did, that's snug. That's on. Let me go kick the key on if you guys stand by. Key's on. And we can see the, sounds like the fuel pump's right here nearby. I can feel it, oh it's right here. It's right down by your oil dipstick tube. Oh I guess I can figure that out. There's your fuel pump right there. So we just watched it fill that little fellow up. Now you can hear the pump change tone. So it must be our filters full. But we're gonna let her go for a few minutes. While we're waiting for that, I'll grab us the oil filter. Right, some time has passed, I'm gonna shut the key off. The pump changed to a nice steady, steady tone. I have the oil filter, which is also about twice the size of the one we took off. Again, I'm exaggerating, but it is noticeably larger. I'm gonna brake cleaner out the little trough down here that's holding the oil. I'll just go in here with Mr. Hankey. Oh, it's not black on the bottom, I see. That is literally a bunch of dirt accumulation. Get our pocket screwdriver. 
see what the heck we're doing. Ew. Ew. We'll scrape some of this crap out. That's the only thing buying used machine, you know, you just don't know. You just hope the guy's not completely ripping you off. Which I looked him in the eye and shook his hand. And I know where he lives. So, he told me, he told me everything he knows. But, he did lie about some things. Obviously, it's worth minding. Which I saw that when I was there, so. Then you automatically don't believe anything else they tell you. <laughs> I did check to make sure the machine wasn't stolen. That's the only thing I did. Come on, get we'll get us a drip of oil from underneath here. Always use clean, fresh, new motor oil on your O-rings. Smear a little bit of oil on our O-ring. Weasel it down in here. There was a choice of two different oil filters for this. I elected to get the shorter of the two. Just because I wasn't sure. It looked like we had plenty of clearance. Probably could have got longer one. I think it was only 10 millimeters longer. It wasn't that significant. Quite a bit larger than the old Fram that was on here. <laughs> so let's see, we're gonna take and snug this baby up. There we go, folks. Now, while we're still waiting for that to finish drizzling down below, we will remove the air filter. Because we're right here. Now, he did tell me every year this thing got changed, whether it needed it or not. And always use John Deere filters. A little bit of stuff in there. Well, it looks like it needed it this year. Or maybe he saw it and said, or not. Well, so this one only has just one element. Our other John Deere at home has two. It's got an inner and an outer. Probably the difference between industrial and farm machinery. They tend to get a little bit more in the dust. Let me just reach up in there and wipe that out. It shouldn't really matter, but we'll go up in here just with a damp rag. Clean her out the best we can. Now I did already have on this machine, I already tilted the cab up on it because I wanted to have a little look-see at all the hydraulics and learn about that function, which it's pretty easy to do to tip the cab up on it so you can see everything underneath. And I just wanted to make sure there was no hoses leaking. And when I did that, I did check the alternator drive belt that you know runs the fan, the alternator, and uh, supposedly you can get to that without tilting the cab, but to be honest with you, tipping the cab up is pretty easy. Only takes a few minutes, so I don't know if I'd worry about tearing stuff apart on the inside to try to check my alternator drive belt. That is part of the maintenance. All right, so that's all good. We wanna make sure our gauge here is reset. So here's our airflow restriction gauge. And that's reset. Looks like a Donaldson, pretty common. So here's our new one. There's the old one. I don't know if that's, so this is a Baldwin filter. This is a John Deere filter, so. I mean, not that Baldwin filters are bad, it's just, well, it wasn't telling me the truth. The whole truth, well, nothing but the truth. She's got a can in for it. Oh, Ken and Nancy, let them bark. Oh yeah, it goes in there pretty snug. Snug as a bug. We're all the way. Let me wipe this out. Make sure our little drain here works. Snap that back on. Shiny. I don't think there's any index key on it, right? Nope, it's just up to us. Put the top at the top, bottom at the bottom. And there we are, I think we're done here. We probably ought to put a little bit of oil in it. They do tend to run a little better that way. Hold the phone there, mister. I was pretty sure I ordered an inner air filter. 
and I did, I just went through my parts. I don't see it in uh, service data in the process of replacing the air filter. However, when I looked it up by serial number, they did show an inner air filter. So here it is. So uh, this one says, do not clean, made in Mexico, John Deere. So let's slip that baby in first. Oh yeah, he's all the way. I thought I remembered that. I thought I remembered the order in it anyways, and then that one goes on the outside. There, I'm glad I looked through my parts pile and saw that little guy. I wonder why I was thinking that. All right, fantastic, so there. Uh, whether it's supposed to be in there or not, I don't know. If it, well, it appears that it should be. Not sure why it's not in uh, service data there. I'm gonna move that a little bit so it's not gonna vibrate on that fuel line. There we go. Now we're good. Forgot about this part, folks. This is uh, draining the fuel sump. I had to come back and edit this in. <laughs> Alright, so that must be it. Here's our petcock on it. Let's open this up. Catch it in a bucket, of course. If there's any water, it should be sitting right down here on the bottom. So let this flow for a little while. I should put it in a container if we were smart so we could see what we're draining out. Looks like diesel fuel. Try not to splash it all over here. All right. I say that's probably good. Beautiful. Let's have a little peek up in there. Make sure we don't see anything weird. Any weird stuff going on, man. It doesn't. Nothing looks weird. Close this back up. There. Beautiful. Take it uh, clean off around our drain plug here. So this little hose right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the little hose just ahead of your drain plug, that's where the uh, oil filter little reservoir is there, that little cup that we cleaned out. I hope I'm not being foolish uh, putting all this service time into it before I go out and actually use it. I haven't used it at all other than to drive it on the trailer, drive it off, drive it inside. After I spent about six hours cleaning the mud off it with a pressure washer. She was pretty filthy when I got it. There's that. We'll torque this down the factory spec, of course, and then we'll go fill her up with oil. I had to walk around the shop trying to find the oldest, dirtiest funnel I could find. Use 13 cans of brake cleaner to get her shined up. Only to find out the two. So, we'll just default to this one. There we go. We're good. <laughs> I should have picked that one out in the first place. We're going to use some JD. Uh, what's it called? Plus 52. It's a 15 done 40. According to service info, this thing holds 7.6 quarts, it says. Oh, she's thick. Put almost two gallons in it, just shy of two gallons anyways. We'll stick our funnel back in the jug. Our cap is clean. I already cleaned off the area here on the timing cover where the cap goes. There's another cap on top of the valve cover, however. If you pick the cab up. I made sure that was snug when I did have the cab up, just in case. We'll pull out the oil dipstick, see if it's got any oil on it. It should be slightly over full at this point, or maybe just a scotch under if I didn't put enough in, but... Okay, see so right now it's right at the full mark, so when we start it, you know, there's going to be oil in the filter. And it's going to lower our level, so I don't have quite enough oil in it yet, but let's go ahead and fire it up, because it is in the safe zone. Contact. Mother lover. We got some air in it, boys. We'll let the fuel pump rattle there for a second.
Contact. We must have sucked a little air in there when we first started it. That's okay. We'll see where our oil's at. We'll have to let it sit here for a while to let it all drain down and see where it's at. And we're about yay far down from the full mark. Full mark's here, we're right here. I'm gonna let it sit for a little while though. Several five or ten minutes before we make our assessment on that and then we'll adjust it if necessary. How many lights does this guy need? Wow, got issues man. That's it for this video folks. Engine oil and filter. I'm not gonna sit here and just you know show you guys that I actually let it achieve its level and adjusted it. You gotta trust me I'm gonna put some more oil on it. Uh, also both fuel filters, taking your wire separator out, taking it apart and you know, cleaning all of its jiggly bits, finding out what the little red ring is, that's kind of cool. And then the uh, air filter also. So all pretty easy tasks uh, as far as I'm concerned. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.